Welcome back, fellow Batchers, to a special Star Wars podcast on TV Podcast Industries. I'm here on my own. It's Derek. Uh, I just wanted to talk about some of the announcements at Star Wars Celebration 2023 in London. Um, the reason why is because we finished up our Bad Batch coverage a couple of weeks ago, and we were a bit kind of wondering what was going to happen. Would we get a, a following season uh, to to the show? So uh, lots of announcements at uh, Star Wars Celebration this week, including a very important one for us especially from Jennifer Corbett, the uh, the showrunner and executive producer of, of The Bad Batch. I'll leave it to her to say it. But I think what has topped that is being here right now where I can say that the story is not over. Yeah, that's right. And that the Bad Batch will be back for a third and final season. That's incredible news. It is incredible news. Uh, we weren't, unfortunately, at uh, Star Wars Celebration this weekend, uh, but got to watch lots and lots of it uh, over the weekend on YouTube. Uh, the Star Wars channel was really good about keeping us updated and showing all the uh, the wonderful stuff that was going on. So big announcement there from Jennifer Corbett uh, at the panel that she did uh, with uh, with Brad Rowe, the other uh, main producer, and uh, Athena Patillo, uh, one of the executive producers as well. And, of course, uh, Michelle Ang and, uh, and Dee Bradley Baker as well uh, on hand to, uh, to talk about all of season two and their thoughts on the season. But the big announcement there that season three of The Bad Batch will be coming, uh, confirmed for 2024. Um, That is the final season, though, of The Bad Batch. That is uh, going to be the end of the show. But it's great that it's coming back. It's great that they're working towards the end of a story and great that we're not going to have to uh, deal with that cliffhanger forever, that there is going to be closure uh, for The Batch uh, in the next season. That's uh, that's really exciting, at least. Um, But as you can probably hear from the reaction from the crowd at at the convention centre in London... um, some kind of mixed views, I suppose, on the fact that this is the third and final season of The Bad Batch. Um, it felt, as we discussed the show during this season, it felt like it was working through to a shorter timeline for their story uh, within The Bad Batch. I know we'd, we'd said that um, there would be a plan that they could have gone on for uh, five seasons, but there's so much ground being covered in the show, particularly in the last four or five episodes. There was so much going on uh, and so much in those episodes that you can kind of see how they could uh, deal this story into three seasons. So uh, very excited to coming back. Uh, I'm always the, the one that remains positive on these things and how excited I am. They're going to be able to tell the story they want to tell within those three seasons. Very cool. Uh, not much additional news out of it. Most of the discussion was on season two and all the big reveals and everything that happened within the season. There was a sizzle reel played for the people that were in uh, at, Cel- at Star Wars Celebration. So some little details have uh, have leaked out about that, including uh, that we will be seeing Fennec Shand return, played by Ming-Na Wen, uh, in her appearance in season one. Um, she'll be back again for uh, at least an episode in season three. So that's that's really exciting as well. Always love uh, Ming-Na Wen. Uh, it makes every TV show better. So great to see her back. Um, but... We will be looking forward to the return of The Bad Batch uh, next year when it comes back uh, on Disney+. Plus. Apart from that announcement, there was so much other stuff going on uh, in the show. The, the show itself celebrating the 40th anniversary of uh, Return of the Jedi, which was uh, which is always fun seeing seeing some of the cast members and some of the people behind uh, such an epic movie, uh, The Return of the Jedi, uh, such a great movie. So, uh, so that was one of the big uh, centerpieces for the weekend. But there were some announcements about some other animated shows and uh, and live-action shows uh, coming uh, in the future. Uh, Tales of the Jedi. Jedi announced to return for season two. Uh, Dave Filoni was on stage talking about uh, about the 10 years since the beginning of the Clone Wars, uh, which was cool. It was really interesting to have uh, all the cast there and all the people behind it, their stories about how they set up and how they started uh, this universe of the Clone Wars and how it, how it started out and how, it's, how it continued for so many years afterwards. And now this experience of the Bad Batch, when they got to that day, Filoni was really complimentary about what the team behind the Bad Batch have gotten to do. And one of the things he was saying was he'd done this uh, Tales of the Jedi season one, this story of, um, of Ahsoka in half the season and uh, Count Dooku in the other half the season and once he saw what they were doing with the Bad Batch he got really excited about going back to animation as you may know Dave Filoni has been heavily involved in the live action stuff uh, for the last couple of years on uh, Mandalorian and, and the other shows but when he, saw, when he saw what the Bad Batch is doing now with animation he really wants to get back into that universe and start working with animation again and he's going to use season two of Tales of the Jedi to train up um, some other people that are up and coming in the animation studio for Star Wars as he says himself to seal um, Star Wars animation so it can 
create great stuff for years to come. So uh, that's very exciting. I'm intrigued to see what storylines he's going to include in Tales of the Jedi Season 2 since Season 1 was so focused on Ahsoka and uh, and Count Dooku. What he did say was he will try and feature uh, the cast from the Clone Wars. Um, so we'll have a lot of them back and hopefully uh, a lot more members of the of the clone army as voiced by uh, D. Bradley Baker as well. So that'll be very cool. One of the big things that was shown at the weekend from the side of animation is uh, Star Wars Visions Season 2 is coming out on May 4th. Of course, May the 4th be with you, as they as they say. Um, so that's their big release for this year. These were the shorts that were done by, um, by I think, in Season 1, it was uh, seven different Japanese animation studios. But this one's much more global, including a homegrown Irish studio where we're all based uh, called Cartoon Saloon who'll be making their debut in Star Wars. Uh, they previously did uh, The Secret of Kells, an excellent uh, Irish animation movie. So uh, they're going to be producing their version of Visions uh, for Volume 2, which comes out, as I said, on May 4th. Uh, we'll also be seeing Ardman Animation who did the absolutely amazing Wallace and Gromit stop motion animations over the last uh, couple of decades uh, as well. I'm really excited to see what they do with Star Wars. They're a very funny studio uh, and I'd love to see their talents put to uh, put to Star Wars. Um, their episode was shown or their, their short was shown at the event and uh, lots of great reaction from the crowd in London uh, to that as well. So uh, very excited to see what comes from Star Wars Visions next season. But probably the biggest news for the weekend is Ahsoka, uh, the live action TV show. The first, I keep calling it, the first live action spin-off from the Clone Wars uh, coming to uh, to Disney+. Plus. They announced the, the release date's coming out in August of 2023, starring Rosario Dawson, who you may have seen uh, playing the role of Ahsoka on The Mandalorian. But we got to see loads of other characters uh, in live action for the first time. We got to see Hera Syndulla uh, from Star Wars Rebels, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead and accompanied by Chopper. Uh, I think John's, uh, my co-host, my uh, favourite droid from all of the Star Wars universe. Uh, we absolutely love Chopper uh, in this house. So uh, so we love love watching his episodes of Rebels. So excited to see him in live action. Uh, the trailer also had Sabine Wren in there from Rebels. And um, we also saw Grand Admiral Thrawn, at least from the back. And it was confirmed that the voice actor of Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Rebel series, Lars Mikkelsen, will be um, reprising his role as Grand Admiral Thrawn in live action. Uh, very interested to see uh, their version of this epic uh, Star Wars character brought to life in Ahsoka. Finally, one of the other things that we saw in the trailer was Morgan Elspeth. You may remember from Ahsoka's appearance on The Mandalorian that her the person she was trying to uh, interrogate for information was Morgan Elspeth. She was the character that she was trying to get uh, details about where Grand Admiral Thrawn could possibly be hiding. So uh, it is now confirmed that she will be back for uh, Ahsoka, the series, which is very, very exciting uh, to see them uh, go up against each other again, maybe uh, in uh, in the series. And the final one, and we don't know much detail about this, but finally it has been confirmed that Hayden Christensen, who of course plays Anakin Skywalker in the Star Wars universe, uh, will be returning uh, to that role for Ahsoka as well, which is really interesting. Um, don't know whether this is going to be flashbacks to the training of Ahsoka, but of course, as it is her series, it's quite likely we're going to see some training montages from early on in her in her life uh, growing up as a Jedi. So I think that's kind of cool uh, where Hayden Christensen could fit in there. And we, of course, saw him on Obi-Wan Kenobi repeating reprising the role as well. So um, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get lots of, uh, lots of moments between uh, Snips and Sky Guy. Uh, in the Ahsoka series uh, coming out in August. That's awesome. Very look, very much looking forward to that. Also confirmation of the best uh, Star Wars live action series. Uh, the second season of Andor will be coming out in August 2024. So uh, obviously really looking forward to that. Can't wait for more Andor. That was such a great uh, first season. But another one that's uh, definitely got me more excited after hearing more about it during the show was The Acolyte, uh, starring Daphne Keane from Logan and His Dark Materials and Lee Jung Jai from uh, from Squid Game. If you've watched that show on Netflix, uh, really excited to see him making his debut in uh, in Star Wars. Both of them, actually. Daphne Keane's been great uh, in everything I've seen her in. So really excited to see them um, in The Acolyte. But what makes this one quite interesting is it's completely different to the other live-action shows. It's set in the last days of the High Republic before The Phantom Menace a period of time that we haven't seen pretty much anything of uh, in live action or in animation. So uh, really intrigued to to see that. And one other character that we got uh, confirmation for on that was um, a character called Kelnaka, who is a Jedi Wookiee master. If you need a Wookiee who uh, is going to be in Star Wars, you have to call in the best you can possibly get, right? So they are getting in uh, Yunus Suotomo, who played um, Chewbacca in Solo, a Star Wars story. So coming back to play another Wookiee, and he says it's going to be very distinct from our Chewbacca that we've seen uh, that we've seen him play uh, to write Solo. So uh, very excited to see Yunus back uh, in the Star Wars universe. I'm delighted to see that. So very cool. 
apart from that, loads of other stuff going on at the weekend. It was fun to be able to watch from home. I'm kind of happy I was at home. It seemed like there was a lot of people at that venue over the weekend. It seemed very, very busy, but but, but full of loads of Star Wars fans who were really excited to to uh, be there for all of the reveals and all the announcements. The big one for us, of course, is the return of the Bad Batch. So very excited to be able to confirm that. Very excited to be able to see that and uh, and watch the panel. You can see that on YouTube on uh, the Star Wars feed on YouTube. They have uh, all the panels up there um, that they that they wanted to release, I suppose. Uh, so you can pop on over and see all the excitement of the crowd and, and hear them discuss uh, all of uh, the Bad Batch season two, which was, I thought, fascinating. That was really, really interesting hearing uh, their own perspective behind the show as well. So great stuff. Thank you so much for joining me for this short little episode about Star Wars Celebration in London and all the uh, interesting announcements that happened. We hope you're following us for some of the other shows that we're covering. We've still got two episodes left of the wonderful Star Trek Picard, uh, one of the other space shows that we cover here on uh, TV Podcast Industries. But we do cover about 30 or 40 shows per year uh, on our podcast, so we hope you find something else to keep you uh, interested and excited um, while we're waiting for the third season of The Bad Batch, including, of course, as we mentioned, Ahsoka coming out uh, later on this year. So uh, we will have more Star Wars content. But if you want to follow our feed, you can follow us on TV Podcast Industries. Pop on over to the website at tvpodcastindustries.com. Uh, there's a, a feed up there for each of the shows that we're covering or our main feed. Just search TV Podcast Industries on any podcast player that you listen to podcasts on. You can also contact us. Email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with any of your thoughts about any of the shows that we're covering or, of course, uh, The Bad Batch and this announcement of the third season. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the third and final season of The Bad Batch coming up. Thanks so much for joining me for this short little episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll see you back with TV Podcast Industries for another podcast very soon. In the meantime, keep watching, keep listening and keep being bad.